common features of esophageal disease. All or most of the esophageal diseases have a common complications. Most of the esophageal diseases cause inflammation in the mucous membrane of the esophagus, a condition called esophagitis. The esophagitis leading to ulceration of the mucosa. This leads to the second complication, which is bleeding from these ulcerations. The bleeding usually from the esophagus is not severe. If minimal bleeding, usually the bleeding pass downward unnoticed in a stool as occult blood in a stool, detected only by investigations. If uh, there is more bleeding, the bleeding pass downward as digested blood in a stool. The condition which is called Melina. If blood is more and more, this lead to hematemesis. Blood from the esophagus usually uh, red blood and not severe. <coughs> Except if uh, the blood passed downward to the stomach and then vomiting or care of the blood. In this case, the hematemesis will be dark coffee ground blood because the hemoglobin react with HCL in the stomach and actually the patient vomit acid hematine which is dark coffee ground blood. Um, due to regurgitation of food and the vomiting, which are very common symptoms in the esophagus. Regurgitation of food and the vomiting leading to the food reach the pharynx. And here there is the laryngeal pharynx, the inlet of larynx, and the inlet of larynx, the vomitus or regurgitation of food may pass to the respiratory passage, leading to pulmonary complications. Most of esophageal diseases finally are precancerous. Corrosive esophagitis, reflux esophagitis, uh, achalasia of the esophagus, all end after a long time by carcinoma of the esophagus if the conditions are neglected. Um, these are the common complications. What are the common clinical picture? The common clinical picture is, we all know that the main function of the esophagus is swallowing a passage for food to reach from the pharynx to the stomach. And its main action is swallowing to pass the food to the stomach. Uh, most of the esophageal diseases affect this function, leading to difficulty in swallowing. Difficulty in swallowing is called dysphagia. Um, the dysphagia may be painful. If dysphagia is painful, it is called odinophagia. Why it is painful? Due to esophagitis. If the disease is complicated by esophagitis, then the dysphagia becomes painful and called odinophagia. 
Um, we should notice that dysphagia is the main symptom in all esophageal diseases. Uh, you should notice uh, also that if dysphagia occur first to fluid, this is usually a benign condition. But if dysphagia appear first to solids, this is usually malignant dysphagia due to carcinoma of the esophagus. Regurgitation of food may occur and very common in most esophageal disease. What is the difference between regurgitation of food and vomiting? I make uh, a very important table for the difference between the two. Um, vomiting. Vomiting is reflex, active expulsion of gastric or intestinal content. Active. Active means contraction, antipristalsis of the stomach and the contraction of the anterior abdominal wall to increase intra-abdominal pressure, to compress the stomach and the intestine to evacuate their content. Therefore, reflex active contraction by antipristalsis of the stomach and the contraction of muscles of the anterior abdominal wall is vomiting. Why regurgitation is passive? Passive return of usually esophageal content or less commonly gastric content. Passive. Passage of gastric content passively upward to the esophagus is called reflux esophagitis. You should notice that reflux esophagitis is a type of regurgitation. Vomiting is preceded by prodromal symptoms. Usually vomiting preceded by nausea and excessive salivation. While regurgitation occur without any prodromal symptom at any time. Vomiting very common associated with reaching. Reaching is common. What is reaching? During the vomiting, this is called reaching. Um, vomiting occur at any time while regurgitation, regurgitation of gastric or esophageal content may occur at any time, but is special precipitated by any factor. What uh, lead to uh, regurgitation of the fluid and return of the fluid from the esophagus or the stomach? Gravity. If the fluid becomes in the direction of gravity, return from the stomach to the esophagus or from the esophagus to the pharynx and the oral cavity. Therefore, regurgitation have a re, an exciting factor and a relieving factor. The exciting factor is leaning forward or, or bending forward or lying flat because during leaning forward, The stomach becomes above the esophagus and the gastric content may passively pass to the esophagus and the pharynx. Um, also lying flat. Lying flat 
the stomach and the esophagus becomes at the same level or the stomach slightly elevated, leading to passive return of the fluid to the esophagus and the pharynx. Uh, if this occur uh, to you during sleep, by night, during a flat, what you do? Immediately sitting or standing because the passive fluid cannot rise against gravity. Therefore, regurgitation is relieved by sitting or standing. Um, abdominal contraction occurred during vomiting only, during active expulsion of fluid. While in passive return of the fluid, no abdominal contraction. Uh, the contents, gastric contents, uh, or intestinal content actively protruded upward and expulsed upward in case of vomiting. Vomiting, the content is gastric or intestinal digested content. While in regurgitation, usually passive return of esophageal undigested food or gastric content which may be digested. Bile may occur in vomiting, while in regurgitation never bile content. Blood. Blood, in case of esophageal disease, usually blood is mild, red blood. But in case of vomiting of blood, this is hematemesis. Vomiting of blood may be dark or coffee ground because the blood is mixed with HCL leading to acid hematine. But if there is massive, massive, massive bleeding, it may be fresh, massive red blood in case of vomiting. In vomiting, we vomit gastric content, which is acidic. But later on, we may vomit intestinal content, which is alkaline. Therefore, vomiting may be acidic or alkaline. Regurgitation. Usually, regurgitation occurs of saliva. Therefore, regurgitation usually alkaline. But if regurgitation of gastric content, it may be acidic. Esophageal distension. We all know in surgery, distension means distal obstruction. Therefore, distal obstruction and distension of the esophagus usually occur in achalasia of the esophagus, which leading to regurgitation while vomiting. No esophageal distension. Um, we know esophageal disease now gives mainly dysphagia. Then, odinophagia if dysphagia is painful due to esophagitis and the regurgitation of food. And we know the difference between regurgitation and vomiting. Then there may be halitosis, which is bad odor of the breath. Why bad odor of the breath in case of esophageal disease? due to esophagitis and if there is retained fluid in the esophagus due to obstruction, distal obstruction leading to retained fluid above, this fluid becomes fermented leading to and the infected and becomes dirty fluid leading to bad odor of the breath, halitosis. There may be severe continuous retrosternal pain severe retrosternal pain due to esophagitis. Finally, never forget manifestations of complication and esophageal diseases due to regurgitation very commonly in neglected cases leading to pulmonary complication like cough, 
wheezes, pneumonia, and other symptoms of and signs of OSOA of respiratory disease. Finally, what are the investigations common for oesophageal disease? Investigations common for oesophageal disease, blood picture. If there is ulceration of the mucosa and the bleeding, there may be anemia. Brain X-ray is essential to detect famous pulmonary complication with oesophageal disease. We can visualize the oesophagus by dye. Visualization of the oesophagus radiologically by dye is called barium swallow. Finally, I can visualize inside the oesophagus the lumen and the mucosa of the oesophagus by upper GIT endoscopy. These are the common complications, common symptoms, and common investigations for oesophageal diseases.